My name is Alison Hay. I am a councillor from Argyll and Butte, a very beautiful rural part of Scotland, which you are going to see shortly. Actually, you won't see shortly because I don't have the machine to move the slides forward. Where is it? Oh, there it is. I do have the machine to move the slides forward. Uh, so there's a wee advert for where I come from uh, contained within the slides. I'm also COSLA spokesperson for Regeneration and Sustainable Development, and I chair COSLA's Zero Waste Task Group. Um, so I'm particularly pleased to be invited to speak alongside the Cabinet Secretary to discuss joint political leadership on the Zero Waste Agenda in keeping with the working relationship that we have presently with the Scottish Government through the Concordat. And it's been in place over the last few years and I think has worked really well in, 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 in sort of partnership working. Um, and I was just saying, uh, I didn't come down this morning, I actually came down last night and I had a, a meeting before I set off <clears throat> um, in a kind of, it must have been a small pocket um, because when I came back out from my meeting and it would only be about half past eight, it was sitting at minus two uh, on my car um, temperature gauge. So uh, it was much warmer as I drew nearer to Edinburgh, so that was a, <laughs> that was a benefit. Um, but anyway, uh, on to what I'm about to say. COSLA has played um, an active part uh, in the development of the Zero Waste Plan document, uh, and I welcome this opportunity uh, that this event provides to discuss um, the plan's evolution and how it's implemented locally and its financial impact. We all need to continue the debate as to how all sectors of society <coughs> can contribute to achieve our shared vision and the wider objectives of the sustainable economic growth that we all hope to, uh, is going to happen. COSLA is keenly aware that local government must give continuing leadership in zero waste and therefore we welcome the recognition within the zero waste plan that a particular waste management solution might not be appropriate in certain areas or a set of circumstances, um, but that its transfer across council boundaries must not be taken for granted. The Zero Waste Agenda aims not for a standardised input approach, only a focus on standardised overall outcomes across all waste streams. This continuing recognition of local leadership will enable innovation and evolution of waste services, which provide good practice and wider economic benefits to other areas and to Scotland in general. I'm heartened in the various discussions I have on waste matters to hear that those involved in achieving a zero waste Scotland recognise the leadership roles of councils in choosing the most appropriate provision of services for their local communities. And councils recognise that we have a lead role in engaging all the sectors of society in delivering leadership and associated action. However, we also need to keep local government's leadership role in proportion. And I'm regularly told <clears throat> that councils only handle 15% of Scotland's waste and its mixed and non-uniform collection of material. Therefore, whilst councils recognise the need to demonstrate leadership, expectations need to be kept in proportion to their level of influence and to the waste resources we are presented with by householders and businesses especially as we move into a tight financial settlement period. Um, and I think there was one point that um, the Cabinet Secretary mentioned. <coughs> we are talking to here uh, a converted audience. Uh, what we don't have in the wider sphere of Scotland is all of us speaking from the same hymn sheet and working towards the same end. There are a lot of people out there who at present don't even know what recycling is, although many do. And I think it's them that we really have to, to look for the hearts and minds of. So I guess you might all be surprised that it's taken me this long uh, to mention the horrible word of money being tight. But no discussion would be complete without some recognition of the scale of cost avoidances required by local government in the next few years. However, within a waste context, given the scale of costs outlined in the recent SQW report, we really do need to consider carefully the next steps. 
finding around £1.5 billion above existing expenditure over the next 15 years creates significant challenges um, uh, as well as concerns when we think about where we are now financially. In the downturn in expenditure next year and the years after will have a, an impact on Council's delivery of existing services, never mind the introduction of any new duties that might fall upon us. Constituents are concerned about a variety of services and in my own council, for instance, at the moment, we are proposing to put 26 local schools out for closure. That has created a huge uh, amount of anxiety among people um, and I am inundated with letters, etc. And that's just one section of the council's budget, albeit a large one. So we are going through um, and constituents will be concerned about these services and they include transport and the local health services as well. And we're also going through in Argyll a review of how that health service is provided. So there are a lot of um, challenges out there at the moment and uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge for councils to balance their budget as you recognised uh, towards the end of your speech and these will increase, I'm afraid, over the next few years. Uh, and it may get to a position in a few years' time where, as somebody once said, nowadays we are all of us so hard up that the only pleasant thing to pay are compliments. Uh, and they're the only things that we seem to be able to pay for at the moment. That's painting an overly black picture, and I'm conscious of that, but it is certainly quite a dark grey one. So, I should have shown you that one the last time, so we're now actually at this one. <coughs> However, instead of dealing with the negatives, I will compliment, and the, again, the Cabinet Secretary did steal a wee bit of my thunder, I have to say, compliment the performance of the public and the councils in raising their recycling rate from the low single figures at the turn of the century to nearing, and it's complimentary, and a lot of the councils are doing over 40%, but if we balance it all out, we're doing nearly 37% currently. And this is uh, still a wee bit short of the aspirational target, but it is a remarkable demonstration of a great deal of determination and commitment. It's a fantastic achievement that we all should be proud of, and it serves as a reminder of local government's past performance, ability to innovate and continue to drive forward service improvements, which will be especially important in the hard times ahead. The recycling improvements were based on increasing the total weight of recyclates collected, and the move to carbon as a measure of recycling performance is something that COSLA welcomes and lobbied for during the Zero Waste Plan consultation. But it will present different opportunities and challenges in implementation. However, waste is measured statutorily in the future, whether it is by weight or through a carbon-based system at um, 2013 or 2020, it will have a significant impact on what is seen as an appropriate waste service at that time. It also offers the potential for innovation and associated economic opportunities for Scottish organisations through the introduction or revision of waste management services. I'm informed that the carbon metric is the subject of continuing development and hopefully it will not be long before we see the initial impact of its use as a decision-making tool and performance monitoring framework. And can I make a small plea that we make it nice and simple as well so that we can all understand it. Uh, I'm pleased that local authorities and the Scottish Government have worked together on this and many member councils are eagerly awaiting the guidance before seeking the Progress Significant Infrastructure Project. So we need to know what this is going to mean to us before we can kind of plan, if you like. Indeed, COSLA identified in partnership with Zero Waste Scotland two Pathfinder projects to look at the implementation of the carbon metric. One, investing the procurement of infrastructure, and two, analysing the lead for the revision of existing waste services. And I look forward to the Zero Waste Task Group, which I chair, receiving evaluation reports on these projects in the new year, and for this knowledge to be disseminated more widely. I'm sure local authorities' early adoption and involvement in the carbon metric again demonstrates leadership from councils in the benefit of the whole resource to the benefit of the whole resource management industry, especially when the data becomes available to extend the carbon metric to all waste streams. It will certainly be something with another of my hats on, and that is the chair of the Environment Working Group on the Council of European Municipalities and Regions, 
take a deep breath, um, and I'll certainly be reporting back to my European local government colleagues, and it will also be very useful uh, source material to submit as evidence to the European Commission in any future review of waste legislation and associated tonnage-based targets. So here we are, I'll remember that this time. Councils also recognise a role beyond that of waste collection and disposal authorities and as procurers of waste infrastructure and associated services. We have a wider remit covering climate change, procurement of products and services, community <coughs> engagement and our role as local planning authorities. So I'm keen to not talk about different forms of council leadership in terms of those actions. I want to sort of broaden the whole thing out but also in these wider related strategies, posing difficult questions of existing legislation at challenging times. Zero waste policies have been identified in the draft report on proposals and policies as a key contributor to Scotland's 2020 42% emissions reduction target. Achieving the 42% will be very challenging in these difficult times for Scotland. The costs to the public sector have been estimated to be around £800 million a year until 2020. That is 2.3% of the devolved public sector expenditure before the cuts. In the view of councils, this is significant and would be a new burden on budgets rather than a reprioritisation exercise. And currently, thinking is that with present policies in place, these should allow us to reach a 33% emissions reduction by 2020. 1% short of the UK target and presumably 800 million a year cheaper. That would be a good result. We all need something to aspire to and I think we do need targets. I'm not saying that targets shouldn't be there. I think sometimes we just need to put a wee bit of pragmatism about how we get there. Um, and we need something to aspire to um, and challenge us. Um, but as I said, within the bounds of realism, Getting to the high 30s by 2020 would still be a significant achievement. As local government, we may have to temper our climate change-related aspirations one by one to demonstrate cost avoidance or direct spend to save because of the present financial state. We are working on the ground. We are the guys that have to you know, go out there to the public and, and say to them, this, these are the decisions that we are going to take and these are the things that we're going to protect, etc. So I'm not saying we bring everything to a grinding halt by that statement. All I'm saying is that we need to be aware that there are cost implications over the next few years. So we need to be um, on the same hymn sheet, as they say, um, with the clear and practical message about why waste policy area is more important and pressing than other policy areas if difficult decisions are required between competing priorities for local people. And it's folk out there that pay our wages and vote for us that have to be persuaded that this is a really important issue. We're concerned that we may not have the money cause the beliefs is necessary to deliver the whole suite of policies needed to achieve the missing 9% to reach the 42%. Another one of my responsibilities is to co-chair with the Minister of Climate Change the Public Sector Climate Action Group, which is a nice snappy title. Uh, the organisations involved have identified the wider use of sustainable procurement as a priority. And I think all the public sector organisations represented on that body uh, recognise the leadership role that they can have in specification of goods and services. I've been informed that the latest estimates suggest that the public sector in Scotland spends some nine billion on goods and services each year, accounting for roughly a quarter of public sector spending and 7% of Scottish spending in total. That provides a very significant potential for change. Councils recognise that sustainable procurement is key to local delivery of the best value regime and the delivery of the duty of sustainable development contained in Local Government Scotland Act 2003. And the Sustainable Scotland Network supports local authorities in improving performance on sustainability matters. It is made up of local authority sustainable development officers who have had a specific work stream on sustainable procurement since 2008. This is a good area to further explore in terms of linkages between zero waste agenda and the general sustainability debate. 
so it was good to see the Zero Waste Scotland staff at the SSN Scot uh, conference last week making all those connections. However, it would be wonderful if we could continue to improve on the current role of councils in specifying recycled content in goods and services in our contracts. And perhaps one day when we have all achieved the zero waste vision, we'll have moved to a system where councils could even give away recycled for use in local economic development schemes, safeguarding existing or creating new jobs and revenue streams, certainly something to aspire to in the longer term. As I said earlier, councils do recognise our leadership role, but also our role as locally elected politicians and the need to engage our communities in open and honest discussions about waste issues. However, it is important that Scottish ministers set the right national context, and I think uh, the Cabinet Secretary uh, did that well earlier on, uh, in these local zero waste discussions. We really do need, in going forward, to have a solid and appropriately resourced public engagement strategy for zero waste. Without it, we will continue to face difficulties in selling waste as an issue to the public sector, uh, to the wider public, and that's what I was talking about earlier on. Zero waste is a public good, not simply because it features in the title of the current National Waste Management Plan for Scotland to deliver the outcomes of the current strategy we will need greater local flexibility to reflect changed times. We need to continually promote our message, especially in hard times, when other things may take a prominence in personal or professional hierarchies. On my journey here, well, I was saying to you um, uh, about the freezing nature of it, but um, I was also thinking about the title of the conference, 100% Resource, Unlocking the Potential of Zero Waste. And it highlighted some of the challenges with the terminology used in the waste sector when engaging the public. It can only ever get to being a 100% resource if we cover energy from waste, from what we can't recycle through either, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to use the I word, incineration processes, or process it to allow methane extraction. The Scottish Government's aspirational targets of 70% recycling by 2025. In the Zero Waste Scotland's own study, this highlighted the low 70s as the highest we can get to at the moment with a following breeze. So it's not quite the 100%. And we need to be careful how we relate and tell this story to the public. Other things are going to have to happen to parts of the waste stream if we are to go higher. Hopefully, it will be prevented or it will be reused before becoming waste. But if it's not, let's just say that energy needs to be recovered from it uh, or it will be landfilled. We all need to be getting the right types of messages out more. Be open about this with the public and stop energy from waste facilities being an easy target for the press. Councils are well placed and experienced in enabling engagement through existing local mechanisms. The land use planning system is a prime example of our engagement with the public and of great relevance to the issue of zero waste, given the controversy that is associated with determining some of these waste developments. Opposition at a local planning level cannot and should not be viewed as a failing by local authorities. We all share responsibility and we should question if we have all engaged the public well enough if there is significant and widespread opposition to certain proposals. And I'm going to quote you now. Indeed, the Cabinet Secretary in the Zero Waste debate this year put it very well when he emphasised the need for local determination of national policies. And I quote, Tough choices lie ahead. Do we want to have a lot of landfill sites? Do we want barren landscapes because we've used up all the resources? Or do we want to have treatment facilities in some parts of the country instead? Those are difficult debates for our communities, and it's only right that they should have a say in where some of the facilities are based. We will have to take some big, brave decisions in the months and years ahead if we are to achieve some of these targets. And I end the quote there. This welcome statement recognises that there will no doubt be opposition to proposals 
and that elected members need all the support that, they, that can be delivered in fairly and holistically determining these types of development. The most controversial infrastructure local councillors will be determining is the energy from waste related. But these types of facilities are, as I am sure the Cabinet Secretary will agree with these words, modern, well regulated and with very small, if even detectable, public health issues. Now that quote, these aren't my words, but those of the Health Protection Agency's review of modern incinerators published last year. We need to get the scientific facts of this report and other publications out to the public if we're to progress the zero waste agenda through the local planning system. Oh, no, I'm too far ahead. Is that one? Uh, COSLA recognised the requirement for councils to identify a range of sites for waste management activities. But there is also a pressing need for technical support to identify the appropriate level of provision. We need to articulate the need for new or enlarged areas through the process of producing a development plan, which can be a two to three year process rather than a two to three month process for determining an application. It gives a longer period for time of, to engage all interested parties in an open and constructive debate. However, this requires buy-in from all parties in the development plan process. Councils in this regard are only the facilitators of discussion rather than directors of action. In addition, we need a recognition from all parties of the realistic timescales needed to deliver our zero waste infrastructure ambitions. It should also be borne in mind that councils are only an early, in the early years of a new planning system and it is still several years before every development plan identifies site. Different councils are at different um, points when it comes to the new development plans. Some haven't started, some are just beginning and, and we're all over the place. So this is, <coughs> this is just a, a procedural reality in this significant stage on the planning system which councils are still in the course of delivering. However, given this current state of procedural flux, I have been advised by the Scottish Futures uh, survey earlier this year that there is nearly 2 million tonnes of waste treatment capacity either been submitted, approved, or in construction, or operational. This is perhaps a different place than is normally painted of the progress of waste-related developments through the planning system. This is why councils wanted the, waste, the zero waste plan to be published, for instance, with a need assessment promised in the Scottish planning policy. And this would have given the technical support and direction we were looking for in delivering more infrastructure associated with the zero waste agenda. Since the public sector, uh, since the publication of that document, COSLA have lobbied uh, for the development of a need capacity assessment. And we really welcome the Scottish Government's intention to revisit Annex B of the Zero Waste Plan to provide further information on the existing and the future need capacity of the Scottish waste management industry. And I hope again this demonstrates initiative and leadership um, by local government for hopefully the benefit of all and that this revision and further updates uh, to Annex B will keep providing the necessary context for local determined decisions of waste management proposals. I'm nearly finished, you'll be glad to hear. Zero waste is still an infant policy agenda, slowly nearing its fourth birthday in Scotland. And we all know the general direction we should be taking and roughly the pace. Uh, and it is an urgent pace, I'll, I'm not going to deny that. Different parties will require to take the lead in different areas. And I'm sure there will be obstacles and challenges and further debate along the way. If I can leave you with one message, councils recognise the need for continuing improvement in all waste um, policies and services, but COSLA will continue to emphasise the need for local determination for the most efficient mechanism of delivering infrastructure and services for their area. These decisions will ultimately be influenced by the resource restraints coming, therefore the dates and areas of impl implementation for new waste services need to be carefully considered and clearly demonstrated as best value for councils and their constituents relative to not only waste options but provision of other competing council services. The increasing constraints 
in future years does not mean that the years of sustainable success and the progress made by Scottish local authorities in contributing to the zero waste agenda will stop. Far from it. But it does mean that we have to, to a lot of work to do in integrating waste along with the, our many other varied priorities. This is the challenge. And over the next few years, some of our aspirations, while remaining, may need to be tempered. Zero waste is a target well worth aiming for. Let's move towards it together and in partnership. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me.